day, Zordium. In a while. Hopefully there aren't any guards out here. The processing center should be just up ahead. Please don't be there, you guys. And welcome back to another episode of Definitely Not Developer Commentary. My name is Mike Stout. I'm Tony Garcia. And uh, it looks like we're coming in on the finale here. We're getting close to the end here, I think. We're, we're, we're finally getting to the, uh, to the final... Uh... I don't know the gauntlet. Price. Yeah, the final gauntlet. Well, I'm uh, I'm still playing, and uh, since I haven't seen any of this before, that means I'm gonna pause when there's uh, you know, VO like there is right now, or cutscenes, and and sort of listen to them. But I'll do my best to try to provide some insight while I do so. Oh wow, this looks really nice. Okay. All right, Tony. So what do you want to talk about? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think since we're getting into the final stretch here, uh, you know, before having gone through this, I know that the, uh, the final fight is probably going to be spent most of the time talking about the fight uh, that's going on. Or rather, maybe you might just be focused on actually doing the thing. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I was thinking maybe we could start using this term to start wrapping up, giving our final thoughts before this starts to get too hectic. Uh, and uh, yeah, just start general impressions of the game now that we've actually gone through it all and uh, had a pretty good sense of sort of what they're doing here and pros and cons, what we like, what we don't like, you know, that kind of thing. All right. Why don't you start, since I'm sure. sucking in the audience uh, here. Yeah, I mean, so now having gone through it and gone, on, and gone through all the stuff, um, generally I'm very impressed with what they did. I did very much enjoy this game. Uh, I like I said I went through I 100%ed the game I went through played through in challenge mode bought all the weapons did all the upgrades um, had a great time doing the whole thing um, uh, generally that by and large really big fan um, I had a lot of fun I I am 100% on board with the earlier feelings uh, I love Rivet as a character uh, I think she's great uh, I really hope she comes back. In the future, I really hope they do more with her. Uh, can't wait to see what comes next uh, on that front. And uh, yeah, I mean that's just that's that, that that's my first initial impression on the story. Um, how about you? How do you feel about things like the story and all that kind of stuff? What your feelings on, on how it was done? Most of my experience with the story thus far has been when I've been watching it back while recording. So it's it's a little hard for me to say. Uh huh. Uh, but uh, the, from a gameplay perspective, at least, I really like this game. Uh, I've been having a lot of fun with it. Uh, at some point, when Sony is selling PlayStation 5s, I'll pick one up. And then maybe I can give this a good playthrough and, and have a better uh, indication of how all that's together. But doing it where I played once many, many months ago, and then now I'm playing again, it's kind of uh, hard to give that... I, I love Rivet also. Uh, I'm, uh, and the gameplay has been, oh wait, what do I do here? Oh yeah, okay. They're having to remind me of things. That makes me think I'm gonna need to put my attention on what's going on. But yeah, I've, I've been enjoying the gameplay. I like all the weapons, uh, all of the, the the setups have been you know sort of what I'm used to in terms of ratchet gameplay. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, I just uh, okay back in the same place. All right, does that go back into the same place too? No, that was okay. But yeah, I uh, I like it. The, I'm incredibly impressed with the technology uh, and just like the, the sheer craftsmanship involved in the construction of everything in this game is, is phenomenal. Like uh, I, I'm hard pressed to think of, of anything I've played that, that is similar. Yeah, I mean, just the, the level of polish that Insomniac sort of brings to their games is, uh, has gotten very, very uh, high and difficult to match, yeah. I think. Uh, and especially, 
having also just gone through and uh, I I went through and play replayed uh, Spider Man and I went and play and replayed through Miles Morales. Yeah, and, uh, good stuff. I definitely having played through those games and now coming back to Ratchet, I definitely appreciate the colorfulness that is present in this game. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's definitely not something you see too much anymore, and I was a big fan of seeing just how colorful it was, like just the you know the big characters, all that kind of stuff. Uh, definitely has a lot more appeal to me. As much as I love Spider-Man, and this is not a, a Christmas uh, like Spider-Man was one of my favorite games that I played when I played through it. But uh, I really like that this game actually showcases the art and sort of what they can really do. Uh, with character, where Spider-Man was definitely more about scale, this is definitely more about sort of character and polish mm-hmm. and presentation, and I really appreciate that sort of what they're doing here um, on that front. Yeah, the, uh, the 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 franchise you're using has uh, imposes constraints on what you're making, right? Like, if you're making something... Back there. What, what's up? There was a swingshot target. That green thing is swingshot. Oh, thank you. What was I saying? Uh, the franchise you're working on puts it, limits. It puts constraints on a lot of things, uh, like, and and it's really not common to see, you know, m- more m- like uh, uh, like this. This is not a uh, hardcore action, uh, you know, uh, Call of Duty esque shooter type experience. It's cartoony and colorful and even though the the themes it can deal with are are serious uh you don't you don't get a lot of that kind of color anymore and i think that's sort of what you were saying right which is right it's it's uh uh it's refreshing i think and hopefully we'll we'll be able to see more of this man i love the depth of field change that just happened back there it was hard i i saw what you're talking about that was really good that that was really amazing was that from the explosion no, I think it was from walking back and forth behind the um, the the the, uh, the crates with the enemy in the distance. Uh, it was they're doing some weird depth of field stuff. Uh, but uh, yeah, that was really good. That that yeah, that was really that made it look very filmic. Um, but yeah, I agree. I mean, I, and I'm glad that there are pe- that there are people out there still making these kind of games. Um, it's becoming a rare thing to see and i'm really glad for doing it uh you know especially right now like only nintendo really makes these kind of colorful kind of games and you only have to buy it once right right like yeah uh so yeah i'm I'm very excited to see sort of where they go from here uh i think this is a, a really good uh this is a very good sign of sort of where the franchise that the franchise still has legs, which is um, which is really awesome. It's always good to see that you know that Ratchet and Clank is still kicking. There's still new things to do um, with the game, and that's always uh, a delight to see. It's always glad to see that this franchise is sticking around and still has uh, pull with people. One of the things uh, that uh, I w- I wasn't really expecting was how big of a deal the 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 rift gameplay is and how necessary the fast loading was for it like it's it's uh it's it makes everything so seamless uh and it lets them do such incredible things like it's you know the 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 haptics on the controller are neat but i could play games without haptics on the controller but like what they're doing with the riffs and uh, uh, this kind of seamless experience is very impressive to me and kind of, it, it makes me understand why I want a PlayStation 5, uh-huh. uh, which, is, which is, I think it's something very much in its credit, right? Because as a, a first party title, part of the point is to sell systems. And like, I was going to get one anyway, but this is, good proof to me that I should should do so. Right. Yeah, I mean, I think I, one thing I will say about the PlayStation 5, um, it's not just Ratchet, right? All games that you play on the PS5 
have that sort of sped up loading quality to it. Maybe not to the degree that this one does. You're not necessarily using it for gameplay, too. Right. But, like, you know, most games that you play on the PS5 load faster. And so this is a little bit of a weird analogy. But one of the things that I find frustrating about sort of as audiovisual technology upgrades is... I remember way back when when I was watching DVDs, I was like, oh, this looks great. This is like the best thing I've ever seen. This looks amazing. <laughs> yeah. And then Blu-rays come out. And you're like, oh my God, I can't go back and watch DVDs again. Like, I go back and watch DVD. I'm like, oh, well, this is, how did I ever watch this? This is terrible. Or even more specifically, I remember one, I remember one time recently I went back and um, I plugged in my old N64 into a television and loaded it up just straight up the N64. And it was just so blurry. And it gave me the worst headache to watch sort of the low res textures and all that kind of stuff it was like it was literally unplayable i could not play it without like actually being in physical pain mm -hmm. um so i feel like one of the things that's very annoying is these technology forward is it makes it harder to go back to older stuff mm -hmm. and i feel like the loading time thing is going to be one of those things where going but if i have to go back and play games that have like these 20, 30 second loads, it's just going to become unbearable um, as the sort of very quick loading time sort of normalizes. Trying to go back, I think, is going to be very hard yeah. for a lot of these sort of times. We'll take it from here. <sighs> you scared me. I'd let you rest, but we don't have a lot of time. You got here quickly. Thank you. They took Ratchet and Kit through that door. Something about maximum security. Things are about to start getting intense. We'll them. And, um, I'm glad you're all right, Clank. You too. What's up? I was, things are about to start getting very intense. Oh, okay. So it's time to start paying attention. Uh, I think you have a little bit of time left, but yeah, it's, gonna, it's going to start getting there pretty soon. Um, that that was fun. Time. I like that. But yeah, I, I mean, so for me, I'll I'll move on to a little bit of criticism. So they do have some criticisms, and I don't think they're unfair, and I don't think that they're going to uh, be too stuff. I mean, this is really comes down to personal preference at this point of my criticisms. Um, I, I you mentioned that you liked all the weapons. I don't have that feeling. I feel like there were a lot of weapons in this game that I didn't find particularly appealing or a pick particularly useful okay um, like what things like that shield barrier uh so i never bought the shield barrier in the game in, in the normal playthrough and i finally went through a new game plus and bought that sort of thing and i was like yeah i i didn't feel it i didn't feel too much use for it and i feel like there was also just a little bit of a problem with the economy in that i couldn't buy all the weapons on the first playthrough so I didn't get to play with all of them just because I didn't have the money to buy all of them. And it would have been nice to have a little bit more leeway in the economy. So I felt like I had a little more, like, because my bolts were so tight the whole way through the playthrough, I feel like I had to be very picky and choosy and not risk my bolts on a weapon that I didn't think I would like. Mm -hmm. So it, I kind of ended the first, my first playthrough with maybe... 60 70 percent of the weapons and there were a whole weapons that I, there were a whole bunch of weapons like i just didn't buy like the freeze gun it didn't seem particularly useful to me so i didn't buy it the shield didn't seem particularly useful to me so i didn't buy it and that was even even with doing all of the mining and uh yeah uh, and that was that, yeah that was the 100 percent playthrough interesting okay. um so yeah there were just like a few weapons where i was just like okay it just seems useful so i didn't buy it and then I only got to really use them in New Game Plus, and New Game Plus is sort of a, a whole different sort of experience in general. Uh, so I wish there was a little bit more leeway to actually have some experimentation, because I didn't think I didn't feel like I had that room to play with some of their wackier weapons mm -hmm. because my bolts were so tight. Yeah, yeah, that that's. It seems like if you're if you're a hundred percent, you should get the get all the weapons. So I, I, I see what you're saying there. Uh, there. I think that some of those weapons are like, they're very narrow in terms of their application. Uh, 
and uh, and that's not always great. Although you do you do probably want a few like average weapons to round everything out. Uh, but like the shield thing, I I know what you mean. It's very difficult to use. It has such a short range on it, and it was like the tactical use for it. I just, it wasn't immediately obvious to me. I'm sure there are I was, situations where it works. I I used it a lot in the uh, arena challenges because I just knocked things off into the lava and one shot them. Mm. Uh, so it was more like a. It wasn't like I'm using the shield as part of gameplay. It was like oh, I'm using the knockback thing and the shield is protecting me long enough to use the knockback thing uh without just you know getting hit in the face by something yeah and then, so like one of the other weapons that i didn't use too much in the normal playthrough that i got in new game plus was the the freeze gun the one that freezes them in a block of ice okay i don't i don't have that one yet yeah i mean that was one of the ones that didn't seem particularly useful to me um so i didn't buy it but that i got in new game plus is there someone? Someone told me there was a uh, replay only weapon. Yes. Uh, you, I mean, I can tell you. I can tell you what it is if you don't want to. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me. So in the in New Game Plus, uh, you actually get the bouncer and you get uh, and you get the pix the pixelizer is supposed to be New Game Plus weapon, but because I bought the collector's edition, I get the pixelizer for free. But New Game Plus was is supposed to unlock the bouncer for you. And unlocks the uh, the pixelizer. Well, that's cool. The so the bouncer. bouncer the bouncer only comes through in New Did... Game Plus. But again, I feel like that would have been great to see in my normal in my normal playthrough. Like, yeah. I would have had a lot of fun with that in my normal playthrough. Um, but uh, yeah, the, so yeah I I mean, was... even in one of the earlier episodes, we were saying, you know, like, oh, how come they get to use the bouncer and we don't? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, so what I was saying, I bought the ice gun in New Game Plus, and what I found out was. It's very powerful. Like it's it's like it's like the disco ball, in that you can use it on any enemy, and it just freezes them, and then they take a whole bunch more damage, and you can do it. So it's definitely very powerful, but it has the downside of you can't just kill them with that weapon alone. You have to use that weapon and then use another weapon to actually kill them. Uh -huh. So it kind of it just has this it just fits in in this weird sort of spot where it's like, okay, it's powerful, yes, to be able to freeze any enemy, and now they take a whole bunch more damage. But it's not particularly fun on its own. And it it's doesn't like, free all of the enemies. It doesn't freeze them all. It frees all. Yeah, it freezes any enemy. Like so, it is super strong because it can freeze any enemy. But because you need to use it with other weapons, it's not just. It's not the most fun thing. It's like you know, it's strong, but it's not like particularly novel. Right. Um, and I feel like there's just a lot of weapons that sort of fit into that category. Where it's like, okay, I kind of get it. But it wasn't. It doesn't have that great appeal. Where it's like, okay, I love this gun. I want to use this gun all the time. And I feel like there are just two or three guns that sort of fit in that sort of mold. And uh, you know, and that's like, I understand. Like you can't. Like guns are hard. Making weapons is really hard. I don't mean to like throw any shade and saying, oh, they should have just made every weapon great. Because I know how impossible an ask uh, that is. But if I had to sort of nail down that criticism, it would be something like that, where, you know, there were a few of the weapons where I was like, ah, this isn't really my sort of style. I would have liked to see something a little different in that slot. Fair enough. 